Okay, Reggie, um, before we get into uh, today's segment, is there anything that you wanted to briefly speak on or shout out before we get started? Uh, just right quick, Libras. Shout out to our Libras. Uh, it's y'all time of the uh, the month uh, for birthdays. And uh, this hope all you Libras have a happy birthday from Bond First. So we just wanted to wish y'all a happy birthday. Uh, other than that, let's get going. Okay, um, obviously the big news is that Diddy was um, arrested on charges of trafficking and rac- racketeering, among other things. Um, I know we did a live stream when it happened, but for those that weren't able to tune into that, I just wanted to get your initial thoughts on the arrest, as I know you know that you uh, predicted this, like the Keefe D one and other ones, and basically just get your thoughts and what you felt when you saw the news break. Well, I was glad. <laughs> I was glad. I was a few days uh, off because I went a little deeper, and that was only just because I was just trying to hope for the uh, anniversary of Keefe D arrest for my days to be correct. But it was obvious, that, you know, it's not that I have any connections with law enforcement or anything like that. Trust me, they they are not giving up any heads up. And you got to remember, and I just want people to understand that informants or snitches or a cop they're not going to be out here putting stuff like that out on the unit you know the unit youtube or social media because of why let one of those cops get hurt when they're going to affect the arrest shit i'll be the first one in jail because i endangered his life if i had some inside information that's just like inside stock trading or something so i would know a lot of you kids like to uh throw in the comment section and make these little comments and all of that. But I just say stuff for y'all to think about so y'all can stop making stupid-ass comments. But uh, other than that, uh, you know, uh, it's obvious, obvious that he didn't take my advice and wasn't listening to me because uh, it was funny to me that, uh, or unfortunate, that 24 hours before he was about to go to jail, Knowing he had to turn himself in, he's still doing drugs. And y'all remember the, the second thing that I, I told him to do? If y'all ever really listen to Reggie Wright, I said, dog, check yourself in the rehab. Because when you go to prison or go to jail, that first couple of weeks, it's going to be hard, hard, hard. It's going to be rough on your ass. Get cleaned up. I'm sure Diddy is in there right now, shivering like a little bitch, uh, shaking, uh, shitting, throwing up, and going through major withdrawals. And so he don't even have time to concentrate on what's really happening to him right now because he's feeling like a piece of shit right now. And that's unfortunate for those of y'all say, oh, he wasn't on drugs like that. Or Trust me, when they arrested him, he had... Uh, some form of narcotics on him when he got arrested. And if anyone can tell that that he had a a drug issue, then you just being naive, or you just a stupid motherfucker. So that would be my take. That would be my second part of my prediction, or or something that I try to help the brother by advising him. And it's obviously he didn't take my uh, take my advice. Yeah. So. He had two court uh, hearings where he was requesting bail or whatever, which ultimately got denied. But at the hearings, he was wearing um, street clothes. I wanted to get your insight because I know, you know, way back in the day you were a jailer. And then um, later in life, you, you did end up going to the Fed. So I wanted to get your insight on where is he now? Um, what, what do you think? Uh, is he being protected uh, is he at risk? Uh, what do you think he's going through in the uh, jail system right now? Well, right now, he's uh, he's feeling his way out. But like I said, he's going through withdrawals right now. Okay, the reason why he was in those the same outfit is because you have, you have uh, di- different departments or different sections within the jail facility where he was in like the, the intake part of the of the uh, NBC of uh, Brooklyn and where you just come in and that's where you pretty much going through. You're like in a big a tank, which I'm sure he was in a, 
a tank by himself where you're just going back and forth, getting a lawyer visit, meeting with pre-trial probation officers and, and uh, just trying to get things ready so you can go to court. Now that he's uh, in those two days, he so that's why he was still in the same outfit. Probably had only had some sack lunches or something, you know, real simple to eat if he had any appetite, which like I tell you, uh, he was very, very uh, going through withdrawal. So he ain't, he, trust me, he's shitting like crazy, right? He, you know, that first two or three days because it's a big shock to you. You know, a lot of even guys that have been to jail several times, I'm sure, you know, he, it's, it's a major thing. The charges that he's been crying with, it's obvious that he didn't think it was going to ever come. And so that's why he didn't know uh, or, or he was prepared and his attorney was telling him, hey, I'll be able to get you bail. You, you know, you'll be out of here, which we found out that not the, you know, the being accurate. And with the, the attorney who I, I think is, he appears to be a, a good attorney. I would have had more of a presence. I would have had more attorneys in there where, uh, you know, they even try to scare those six, uh, you know, uh, deputy uh, U.S. attorneys that, hey, y'all about to be in for a fight. With him just coming in there with one or two attorneys, uh, but I'm sure they know his reputation and they they know what type of army he has probably behind him, meaning the attorney. So what he's going through right now is just pretty much getting ready, and now he's going over to the to the NBC Brooklyn. He's going over there to that's where the people that's like the county jail in your neighborhood, where you know everybody just fresh off the streets, in and out. They just coming off the streets. So niggas are still kind of walling out. Uh, They're not programming. They don't understand about the points and how you go for your different levels uh, from a, trying to get to a camp, a low, a medium, a high, or administrative, what they call it, which is generally the uh, a AXA or I forget what they call it, ADA or something like that. They got a name for the, you know, the supermax prisons. And so uh, those dudes right there, when you get into there, they done been in there for a little while, and so they kind of know how to adjust. These dudes that's just straight off the streets, they still game banging, and you know, still a little wilding out and going through drug with, withdrawals and stuff like that. What did he? What I would warn him right now. First thing I warn him is because I know right now he got money, so everybody in there knows he has a little bit of money, and so you're gonna be getting niggas trying to come at you. Hey, homie, it's, they call it a soft push where, you know, you hang with me. The only thing you need to do is put about $500 to $1,000 on, on my books, on about four or five of our books, and we got you. So that's what dudes right now coming in the door. They plotting. They trying to figure out how they're going to get $500 to $1,000 a month on their books or, or some legal fees or something like that taken care of. So right now he's getting people coming at him like that. I would just want to warn him and his family when you put money on people's books and stuff like that that you don't know, just watch out because one or two of those niggas are rats. They're informants. They're going to be offering them drugs and stuff like that because, trust me, the cops and the, the DAs and all of them, they don't play fair. And they will send a snitch and a, a rat to get up under you to try to get you to buy some drugs and to get you set up to mess up your conditions in there. And so... I hope Diddy is street smart enough, got somebody that's in his ear that when he was over there walking in Harlem taking pictures where he knew he was about to go to prison, where he was walking around with one of those dudes and they were giving him game. Like, this is who's in there right now. This is who's going to look out for you. We know their people. Their people going to make sure you good in there. And if you got to get some drugs or whatever, only get the drugs from this person because he's solid. Because you go in this in there trying to buy drugs and get drugs from anybody, from a guard to uh, uh, to anybody that's in there, be careful because you're taking a chance again. Because they catch you in there buying drugs again, that appeal that you got going to the 2nd District, definitely going to get shot down. And then you're going to be start off at a fucking federal prison, which right now you got gain to possibly be at a medium prison. Pen, you know, if you're convicted of these crimes and get less than 20 years, 20 years or less.
Yeah. Okay. Um, it was reported that Diddy was scheduled to turn himself in last Tuesday, um, but something happened and the feds decided that they needed to move in the day before. Obviously, this is speculation, but what do you think are some of the reasons that um, the feds moved in? What could Diddy have done that warranted them to move in a day early rather than let him turn himself in himself? Everything that you heard in that court hearing that we done heard at that bill hearing, they did not want the Diddy's attorney to be able to say, hey, like he tried, he's not a flight risk, your honor. He's willing to fight. He want to stand up and fight and fight these charges. He 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 didn't try to run from this. Everything that the attorney was saying, they wanted to be able to go and say. The deputies, U.S. attorneys didn't want him to be able to say that. Now, I would have normally thought that they did it for the perk walk, uh, which, to be honest, in fairness to them, it didn't come out until, what, two or three days later on TMZ. Music mogul Sean Diddy Combs has been arrested by federal agents at a hotel here in New York City. Combs had been living there for several weeks. A person with knowledge of the investigation told NBC News the arrest was based on a sealed indictment brought by the Southern District of New York. The contents of the indictment won't be known until later today, but Combs is facing a wave of lawsuits accusing him of sexual assault. And so they normally would have had, had their People, you know, reach out and had every news agency sitting outside that hotel when they came out. Uh, for some reason, that didn't happen. But, yeah, generally, you would call and, and make contact. You have your attorney write a letter and be like, hey, we understand Mr. Wright or Mr. Combs or whoever is under, uh, there's a grand jury going on. Contact me. He's willing to turn himself in on such and such date you know, or, or whenever you tell us. And, you know, that's how attorneys usually work with each other. But they don't have to. That's just usually what a uh, courtesy that they usually extend to some people. For some reason, the attorneys, you know, the female's attorneys or that or that U.S. attorney decided that, hey, we, you know, we're not going to honor it. We understand what. What the attorney has said is going to happen and all that. But now once we get the indictment, we're going, we're going in. We're going to arrest him. Why? Because they knew that he was a druggie. And they wanted to go and catch him with drugs like they did. So they could expose that to the courts. And so the courts wouldn't have a reason to give him a bail. Because generally, and like y'all even heard my position with Keefe D, I hate when... uh if Reggie can get it and Glenn can get it and John can get it and Michael can get it, but no, Reggie can't get it, but the other four can get it. I don't think that's what America is supposed to be about. But if Reggie got a drug problem and John don't have a drug problem and, and this issue and John never been to jail and Glenn never been to jail, but Reggie been to jail once, once before, whatever, then that's the issue. Then those are the type of reasons that the courts can say no. Well, we're gonna we're gonna take a chance with John and Michael, or or whatever. But we're not gonna take a chance with Reggie. That's how that games work, and uh, and uh, I understand that. And so that's why they did what they did. I don't think Diddy's going to uh, to uh, get out of the, on bail even on this new appeal that I think he's filing to the second district or whatever. Uh, I think that's why the attorney just said what he said to, to to Diddy that, hey, I'm gonna try to get this case brought to justice as soon as possible, you know. And when he's talking about as soon as possible, y'all, <laughs> he's talking about like 2026, y'all, 2026. But as we know, there's cases that can go on. There's somebody that we know over here at Bomb First that went on for three or four years, Shug Knight, and that was just a state case, but it. Cases like this can go on. R. Kelly. Let's look at the time that on R. Kelly. How long he, from the time he got arrested then from the time that he got convicted? Just give you a time time limit uh, or a time zone of uh, how long the, it, it generally takes for you to go get arrested and, and go to trial. It could be three to four years. You know? 
uh, Diddy has about three to four years, in my opinion, of being at NBC uh, Brooklyn. I hear he's trying to go to New Jersey. I don't think it's going to happen uh, because that's a lot of back and forth transportation that the, the marshals would have to uh, spring for or pay for, you know, giving him a private van, driving back from New Jersey to uh, New York uh, on all those different quarter point court appearances that he's going to have to have. So it, I don't think he's going to get that, that, um, that request, uh, approved, but who knows he may, but it will be stuff like that, that his attorney need to be working for now, trying to get his conditions. Well, it's funny to me when people go and say the conditions are horrible. These are, but it's 2000, 3000 other motherfuckers in there. <laughs> it's not horrible for them. Yeah, it's horrible to your lifestyle that you had. But that's why you're not supposed to be doing the stupid shit to get put in those situations. Um, and so that's something that they're going to have to deal with. So don't don't y'all get caught up in that. Conditions are horrible. Conditions are horrible and all of that. It ain't con Shit, El Chapo was there, right? <laughs> there were other people that were there that were rich. And there's poor people that, you know, that they have to be there, you know. That shouldn't matter, in my opinion. Okay. Um, it was reported uh, once the indictment came out what exactly they found during the raids. And obviously everybody's, you know, made a uh, internet meme about the 1,000 bottles of baby oil and whatnot. But they also revealed that they found photos and videos of these... Um, of these freak offs what were your thoughts when you heard that they actually did find videos because for months we talked about how you know like oh they're coming you, you need to delete your stuff you need to you know get rid of this or get rid of that um so what were your thoughts that when it was announced that they actually have video proof and who could possibly be in partaking in these videos yeah well I, you know once they came i knew they had whatever they needed uh, especially once we knew that they got guns and stuff like that. It was unfortunate that people were putting out that Diddy knew they were coming and Diddy didn't, Diddy, uh, didn't left his kids at the house and all of that. And I kept telling y'all, Diddy didn't know they were coming. <laughs> if he knew they were coming, his kids wouldn't have been there. But more importantly, as we saw, no fucking illegal guns wouldn't have been there. I'm surprised, surprised like crazy that, uh, that they didn't charge no particular guns on Diddy, uh, especially because that's a, that right there, those type of weapons are 10 years, 10 years to 11 years off the jump, especially with a, a, a scratched out serial number. If y'all don't know why people scratch out serial numbers, that is because you can't find out, you know, who they registered to, that they're stolen or whatever. That's why they deface, that's why people deface serial numbers because they can't run a trace on the guns. And, and so just disappointed inference. And that's a major crime uh, in, in most states and federally. So I'm surprised that uh, they didn't charge that. But I'm really thinking the reason that they haven't charged those guns on Diddy yet. Because, yes, he have a security guards. He have a whole bunch of people that be inside his house, his kids, his sons, and all of that. I'm thinking they're waiting for the prince to come back. So don't, don't be surprised if... Uh, uh, once the latent prints come back, which they should have came back now, and it's been about six months, they've been in their possession, that some people wouldn't be getting charged with those guns. And they probably couldn't get Diddy prints on those guns. He might have wiped them down or somebody else, you know, it could have been touched over by everybody probably wanted to pick up those guns and play with the guns whenever they're alone at the house. But that would have been a major, major charge. And that moves you from not being able to go to RDAP and all type of stuff, uh, which he's going to be in there for some sex crimes. So he's not going to be able to get RDAP programs and all of that anyway. Um, so the, the, the part of the taping and all of that is, yeah, we knew when they pulled out all those VHSs and those VA, all that high tech, uh, uh, what you call those, uh, cameras and stuff like that, we knew he had been taping it and was storing stuff. And uh, yeah, I've been seeing all the executives, right, that has been resigning and stepping down. Well, 
The reason why the executives have been resigning and stepping down, y'all, is because they've been getting contacted. And what people don't want to do is they have, when you, you get jobs like that that run a corporation and CEOs and stuff like that, you have in there stock options and, and buyouts and, and moral clauses and stuff like that. And they're going ahead and stepping down now because they don't want to lose all of the rights because of the uh, the moral clauses that they have in their contracts. If, if y'all wonder why they're stepping down, is because, number one, they done came to the job, they done came up there and talked to them or threatening to if they're cooperating or not cooperating. And so they are scared that they're going to embarrass their company and they're going to lose and get fired and lose all of this money because of the moral, their, uh, the moral uh, clauses in their contracts. That's the main reason why a lot of the executives are stepping down. Now, most of them are becoming uh, witnesses. Uh, trust me, they're going to be becoming witnesses, but some of them are not going to be able to become witness. You know, just like the young lady in her lawsuit said with Jake the jeweler. She went and had sex with Jake the jeweler. It's not a crime for her to for her to go and have sex with Jake the jeweler. But the crime is because she flew across state lines and was paid by Diddy. She didn't say Jake the jeweler gave her an extra thousand dollars, you know, minus the fee that she got just for coming. She said Diddy gave her the extra thousand dollars for sleeping with Jake the jeweler. That's when stuff becomes a sex crime, y'all. And so that's why a lot of these executives or these people, they're going to have on film having sex with these people, but it's going to turn out that Puffy was the one that took care of them because he was looking out for them. It's kind of an unfortunate situation when we're talking about stuff like that, to be honest, if I'm keeping it real, y'all, because... They, he thought he was just looking out and giving these people that was in that particular business, giving them some money and taking care of his executives that were probably doing major deals and big deals for him. The problem that Reggie, and I'll be honest, the only problem that I will have with Diddy for what he did is if there's any unage people and anybody that was drugged doing any of these free call sessions. That's it. I know, and I'll be the first to say, the, the problem that I have is the people that were given drugs. The only reason that I believe, I have always talked about Roger Bonds, who I believe was going to be the next person, one of the first people that's going to be indicted. I do not believe Gene Deal is going to be indicted or, 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 or do anything like that. But, I believe he's going to be questioned about the drink that he always talk about that Diddy has been making. Not because, because we know the indictment didn't start until 2008 and we know Gene hadn't been around him since then. But if you can show a pattern that he'd been doing this stuff since 1995 and all the way to 2002 and then people like Mark Curry and Roger Bonds and all of them who talk about this particular drink that he's been making, if they can show that he's been doing that since 1995, all the way to 2004, they're going to be good witnesses for the uh, for the government. And not only witnesses, not Gene, I'll say it again, not Gene, but other people may have some, uh, some issues. Uh, because if y'all go and really listen, there's some audio that's been leaked out there to where uh, they, the, the court hearing where they talked about unindicted co-conspirators that may be turning into indicted co-conspirators. And they said security guards. That's who I believe is definitely Roger Bond. But I'm not going to be one out here throwing dirt on people and hating on people and all of that. But that's my next, that's my next prediction. Roger Bonds will be picked up real soon. It's unfortunate. Vlad humanized the hell out of him. He seemed like a good dude. But he also, if y'all really go back and listen to that interview, y'all will also see that he was saying a lot of things that would make him liable.
Okay, um, I wanted to get your response to something that Gene Deal did say, and that was that um, Miami didn't do anything, Los Angeles didn't do anything, it was the Southern District of New York that did the raids and uh, brought up the charges against Diddy. Um, I just wanted to get your reaction to that statement. Yeah. Well, that goes to the part where Gene, I always tell Gene to stick to uh, being a, a, a parole officer, a probation officer, because he, do, he doesn't understand how the law enforcement. So you got correctionals, officers, and, and options of law enforcement. You got law enforcement, meaning cops and, and people like that. And then you have uh, the probation side of law, of, you know, the of, of, of criminal justice. And so he knows the part about parole and probation and stuff like that. He don't know shit about the law enforcement part by a lot of statements that he makes, if y'all really listen to him. New York was always spearheading that. All L.A. and Miami did is that was the jurisdiction where the houses were that they wanted to raid. So that's all they did, were went out there and made the raids for that New York office. They are the ones that picked it up, mainly because that's where Puffy Lil. Mainly that's where most of the victims lived and where they filed the lawsuit at. Uh, and where Cassie filed the lawsuit at it was in New York. And so that's why they took, picked it up. It wasn't that New York, and that's that New York, y'all, people in New York, y'all love New York, boy. I swear, y'all, y'all some of us. It wasn't that New York was just, cause they got the best law enforcement system and this and this and that. It was just because they were the ones spearheading it. But they had their partners in crime. They're agents that worked in, in California. But trust me, one of those six ladies that was sitting up there at that press conference, she was out there in, in L.A. when they went and raided that house and, and, and some FBI agents from New York. One of those uh, females was in Miami with those and one of those agents that worked for her in Miami. So when y'all hear stuff like that from Gene, y'all just got to understand what he's saying that he don't really know. No disrespect to him because he's been right on. He's been right on telling us about Puffy. I'll be the first to say that. He's been giving us the head about Puffy. Not about the rest. Not about when it's going to happen. He bit that from Reggie Wright. And y'all know that. But he has been right on about Puffy being a, uh, a weirdo and a Puffy. Y'all got to also say, Suge Knight and Tupac been telling y'all since 95 and 96 what Puffy was doing. And so, this is not something new. You know, the word freak off parties and all of that, I'll be honest. Death Row done did shit like that too. We done had parties where we done flew chicks in from other states and all that. And and they, you know, party with dudes and stuff like that. I done told y'all about chicks from Magic City and from Houston that came. Uh, that my boy, rest in peace, L.A. Dre, that did it. So, but one thing I can honestly say, Sugar, he never did. I know this. He ain't did no homosexual shit. He was stingy with the girls. So he ain't, he ain't letting no, one of the homies and stuff and sitting in the corner jagging all while, while, uh, while one of the homies fucking on the chick. He ain't did no shit like that. And he definitely ain't gave no people no drugs or like that. They might have had drugs there and got drugs, you know, on their own. But Suge Knight sure wasn't uh, supplying it for nobody. Because, number one, the nigga's too cheap, you know, when it comes to stuff like that. Or selfish. He's not cheap. Suge's not cheap at all. But selfish. <laughs> and, number two, he just went into doing stuff like that publicly. And so, uh, that would be my comparisons between Bad Boys and Death Row and what they were doing. I honestly just think Puffy got carried away with the shit. Can't say he had, he just started something new. Because we done heard of the rumors between Justin Bieber. Y'all see that video online? Y'all can tell Justin Bieber is shook uh, of Diddy. That, that's surfacing up. Puffy, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Usher, he pretty much talked about it. <laughs> you know? And so we know Usher and his mama was definitely scared of Diddy and all of that. And so Diddy has been doing stuff for a while. It's just that I think he thought... It was okay because he was paying people to do it. 
and not understanding the cross of state line stuff. That's going to get him. And then the drugging part, the drugging part is uh, of, of the drinks. Then, then that's that's what's going to get him, y'all. That's where he fucked up at y'all. Speaking of the um the free calls, it was reported that not only the victims but Diddy himself would typically receive IV fluids the next day to recover from like the physical exertion and the drug use that they did. Um, what are your thoughts on on that? The fact that they were you know getting IV uh, um, fluids uh, refreshed in them because these these freak offs were so intense. I never partied like that before. I never been at a party or seen anything like that or even I heard of people that's been on you know drinking and overdoing it at parties and stuff like that getting IV and you know you know when you get drunk or too much. That's the first thing they do if you go to an ER and stuff like that is give you an IV. Uh, I have heard of that. Uh, I've never been around that. Shug didn't spend money like that when I was around him on stuff like that party and like that. Uh, I told you of a situation before where a young lady was in there with Pac and Shug and they uh, and then one of the young ladies got too drunk where we had to get her out of there but we just got rid of her. We didn't know uh, you know, we, we didn't give her no IV. We weren't trying to keep them. I mean, I I wouldn't want a bitch around me uh, after a day, uh, especially if she ain't going in there showering and, and taking taking baths and, and getting fresh again. You know, I like to smell that that scent of Victoria's Secret and all of that. You know, so go home, bitch. Go get yourself right and come back tomorrow. But the way they were obviously doing it was, it was like three or four days of, of laying around. And that's the type of people that look like fiends to me. When you start laying around for two or three days, and I don't even want to take baths and showers behind motherfuckers. So he said, well, they were there taking showers. Well, shit. I mean, one or two people take a shower at a spot. I don't even want to take a shower, you know, without the maid or somebody coming to cleaning that house up. So, I, yeah, they were just, they were wilding out. They were partying and and doing stuff, and, and the IVs is just a recovery. If any of y'all ever go to the, the ER for drinking or something too much, trust me, that's the first thing they're going to do, just put you on an IV, and you'll be feeling like new within a few hours. I remember, shit, I did an interview with John. Uh, it was my son's birthday party about three years ago, I think when we first did it, and we was rushing to go to my son's birthday party, and... I was just like dehydrated. And that's when I was losing all that weight and all of that stuff. And I was like fucked up. My wife went online and ordered me one of those IVs. Then we paid like five hundred dollars for it. The next day I was like, <laughs> I was like, like I'm back. <laughs> and so to be honest, they do work. Uh they do work, but that's all I I took from that. Um, the, the only part about it is after two or three days, man, that's some nasty shit in my opinion where you laying around that much, being around the house. You had no more than four or five restrooms in the house with that many people. That's some nasty shit, y'all. <laughs> okay. Um, it is now being reported that he's on um, on watch in, in jail to ensure that he doesn't um, off himself or harm himself. Uh, do you feel like that's something that they did based on his character? Because I know you've said for many months now that the only reason he wouldn't go to jail is if he did something like that. Um, or is this kind of standard procedure for somebody of his stature going from a billionaire status to being into a prison where you have no control over anything is that kind of standard, or do you think it's based uh, solely on him and his character? It's a little bit of both, uh, but they do have doctors coming around talking to you. They have uh, officers. That's the first thing I remember when I when I went in. They they ask you those questions: how you feeling, what you thinking, and so they do have shrinks that they do have come around and talk to you. So if they put him on that particular watch then that means that one of those uh, doctors felt that he was talking nonsense or 
or talking that way and felt like they they needed to uh to you know to isolate him now he may think it's smarter being funny but trust me that's a bad bad decision trust me y'all general pop is much much better than being in the shoe and definitely better than being on that watch on that watch they usually have a senior officer maybe like a sergeant or above watching over you and then they have inmates standing around who is their job to watch you in a padded room you know where you can't do anything they they put you in this look it's like an outfit that's like white and it's like uh, I forget what they call them but it's like a, a, a piece of plastic so you freezing like a motherfucker you cold you shivering they don't give you no major mats or anything. It's the worst condition you can be on if they put you on that particular watch. So, and with him going through the withdrawals, y'all just don't know if all of this stuff is true. And y'all know a lot of stuff get reported don't actually be true or factual and stuff. But if it is true, he's having it the way all us Tupac fans and stuff want him to have it right now. He is having the worst days of his life. Victims are getting, if y'all believe in an eye for eye type stuff, then, then victims are getting their justice. Because number one, the cold alone is killing you. Because that's what the officers do. They'll turn that air up to mess with you. And then also to keep germs out. You ever go to a hospital or places like that, you know there's always real cold in there. It's because they're trying to keep those germs from floating around. But mainly, and then most officers are just assholes, and they know how cold it is, and, and they're trying to treat you like shit. So that would be my take about that particular thing. Uh, but I'm one that believes that uh, they, they should put him in a, a shoe. But once he gets in there and dudes from his neighborhood start telling him, all right, we got four or five guys that's going to look out. You're going to look out and they feel that they got enough people, they got enough money on the on people's books and stuff like that to look out for him, then he's going to be all right. He's going to be all right. Now, him personally, not going to feel like going that route until everything starts happening. Y'all got to remember, they put on that indictment uh, a charge where they can make it a criminal enterprise, where they trying to take all his money. I always make little quacks about Suge and all of that. But I was just telling somebody the other day, I give Suge a pass for how he was acting. I think it was Wag 100 because you know, he was talking about how he was doing this and doing that. I said, I give him a pass for that smoking and, and drinking a lot and all of that because the, the stress of losing a $100 million company and worth and all of that, we don't know how that feels. And... Uh, and so, y'all got to remember, Puffy was almost at least $500 million strong worth the act. You know, people say a billionaire. Uh, I don't believe that, you know, but he had enough money. And to go to start losing that and not to be able to touch that and to get to that, that plays a part on you guys. The lawyer going to drain you out of that. Y'all going to be hearing about a lot of assets and Puffy poor daughters that just knew they had a great life ahead of themselves and all them, the twins and, and people like that and and his, his sons, Justin, and 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 and, 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 uh, and then uh and then Wolf's son and uh Al B Shore son, they all life is about to change. And when you see the disappointment, you see the disappointment in them when they send you and his mom, I'm sure she going to start having some health conditions that she never had. When uh when you see that those people and they coming up there visiting you and all of that, that's what's going to eat him up. And that's when you have to worry about him not being able to face a life and wanting to go to maybe the afterlife. And so, uh, but not at this point. Right now, his attorneys are telling him all the right things. They're telling him what they're going to do and all of the great plans that they have for him because as long as he's cutting no checks and no checks are clear, they're going to drain your ass. They're going to drain you. 
And he may go through some because he's going to see it. But you don't get rid of one until you got another one in line. And this is what attorneys know what to do. And this is what they're going to do. They are not your friends. They're there to put their kids through law school or whatever other type of school there is. Okay, being being that he does have funds, that he does have money, um, outside of, you know, uh, if if it goes the route where he is taking care of people for protection or whatever, outside of that, what can his money buy him that will um, comfort him in, in jail or in prison uh, at this time? Because uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but until he's convicted, will he stay in jail or, or in an in, in jail? Can you buy things? Can you buy yourself a TV? Can you buy yourself these extra foods? Can you break down a little bit about what he can and can't do for himself with the funds that he has? both where he is now and if he gets um, convicted later in prison. Yeah. What it would cost him to live in prison is nothing compared to what he was used to spending per day, you know, on the streets. Trust me. I mean, dudes in there are going to move for him for anywhere between $500 to $1,000 a month on their books. And you just have people sending money on, on the books to people. I mean, that dude that's at the, they call them contracts. They do the uh, got the uh, the cook the cook in there, and they gonna be snitching on each other, cause they gonna be knowing shit. Glenn getting a thousand dollars for cooking for Puffy, uh, uh, Michael getting this just for walking the tracks with him and all that, and they gonna be snitching and trying to get them rolled up and and being like I'm tougher than him, I'm better than him, and so those contracts is gonna be big, but if she, if if Puffy just putting five thousand dollars a month on niggas books. That ain't shit to him. That's what he spent on the car service that particular day, driving him around New York or or the hotel room. So that ain't gonna that ain't gonna bother him at all. It as I always tell y'all, it doesn't cost much for you to live on the in, in, in jail. What it usually costs you is you worrying about people on the streets. That's why I always talk about Suge Knight. I don't want him doing no book deals or no movie deals or nothing like that until he gets home. And, you know, because right now all he's going to be doing is giving money to his, you know, to his girls, his woman. And then they all going to be living good. I always say, save your story, dog. Wait till, you know, you still got another life. People, Chuck would be out of jail at age 70. He has, you know, even Puffy, if he gets 20 years, if he gets 20 years, he would be out of jail at age 70. You know, he have to do about 16, 17 years <coughs> on a 20-year sentence. Now, a lot of y'all going to be talking about, well, the First Step Act, and that's what the attorney's going to be telling me. First Step Act, you can get out of prison because uh, now you're over 50, then you get half time. Well, not for, the, not for sex crimes. And so I hope he gets with a, a person that knows sentencing because attorneys don't know those BOP laws. They know the criminal laws. He got to get with somebody and Puff, if any of your people are listening, tell them, teach you about the BOP laws, the, the, the things that can get you out. Cause that's the type of deals you want to plead out to. You don't want to be pleading out the shit with guns and sex crimes and all of that stuff and shit where they can take your money or, uh, uh, you know, cause they made you a criminal enterprise. Because generally, a prosecutor, all they want to get is the years. You want to plead out the stuff that where you can save your empire, where you can get go to programs and work and get, you know, the the, the first step act to fifty percent off because you're over fifty percent age fifty, and not do eighty five percent of your time. Because that's a big difference. Fifty percent of your time versus eighty five percent of your time, that's a big difference. But there's a lot of crimes that you won't be eligible for. But to answer your question, John, because I know it went away from your question a little bit, is it's not going to cost much for him to live in prison. That uh, dude's going, they will move for him for a lot more. That shot caller, because they got a shot caller, they got a guy that's doing the kitchen, and they're going to have two or three guys that will walk around with him and go everywhere he goes. That going to look out, so he don't, he ain't going to have to put no more than money on the books for about five or six different people. And I'm telling you, that's cheap. When I was in prison, 
All they would allow us to do was spend $300 a month for commissary. Uh, when I first went in, you could spend us a little bit more, but then they made it where you can only spend, I think, $50 a week or something like that. So what you do, and any of y'all that was looking out for me that was real close to me, y'all know what y'all was doing, you put money on other dudes' books, and then they go shop for you, and you just buy them a little bit of stuff. So that's how you live in there to make sure that you're good. Is, you know, you you give a nigga $100 and tell him, all right, nigga, you buy $50 worth of stuff for me, $50 stuff for you. That's how it generally works. And that's the type of stuff he's going to be doing. He's going to learn and adjust. He's going to get burned by a couple of niggas that's just buster, bitch-ass niggas, just like on the streets. You got niggas that's just, just, that's just in them. But then you cut those motherfuckers off. And you get some real people in there. And there's some real dudes in there that are just trying to live and survive. And so that's all his money is going to be doing. Where his money is going to mainly be ate up is by one, attorneys, and two, people on the street that coming up there making no business for you that you feel as though you have to take care of. When hopefully he would just put his money, uh, set up a trust for each one of his kids. Because that's all I'll be worrying about. If I had a wife, I don't think Puffy has a wife, but I had a wife. I'll be looking out for my wife and my kids and whatever my parents need. After that, you got to start cutting people off. You got to start cutting people off. And you need that one assistant or that runner that's going to still do stuff for you and make sure they they good. But his life, he's going to, if he doesn't lose his money in the, uh, uh, he's going to save money per year. He's going to realize how cheap it is to live. Versus how he was spending money to live. Yes. Naturally, a lot of people were, uh, I don't know if it's wishful thinking, if that's the word, but um, a lot of people were hoping or wondering if him getting uh, this indictment and this, you know, arrest or whatever, if this will have any effect on the Tupac case. What are your thoughts on that? Okay. Puffy going to get to a point where he going to call in and they have what they call a uh, some type of hearing they call. It's not a 5K, but he going to get to a point where he just want to lay everything out to the U.S. attorney. He wanted to just talk about everything he did or they going to want to meet with him and talk about everything. Where they talking about doing a plea deal where him and his attorneys is just saying, okay, we willing to lay all of this out Lay all of these people out and all of that. And each different agency that has an issue with him or think he has something to do with, they're going to come to those meetings. Mainly just to close their case. You know, just to, to figure out. You know, maybe they're going to know this person was dead or that person is dead and all that, but they just want to close their case because that's how cops and departments and captains and all of that get graded by their close case, not their conviction rate, close case. Y'all remember on the wire when they used to be excited about making shit go from, from black to red or red to black and all of that? Well, that's really a, a true statement of how cops get graded on, on their case getting closed. Like I said, not about the conviction. That's why I always talk about the be, the biggie thing. They feel that their case is, is solved. It's not. It's not a a closed case, but it's solved. And so, because they know who the players are, they feel they know the, the answer to that question. And so, he's going to have that hearing one day when he's ready to plead out, because I don't think he would take it to trial. Uh, he'd be a stupid. After he, you know, lose all the emotions, just like KPD, where they're going to have that hearing. And Vegas PD... Uh, detectives and their DA is going to go down there and talk to him and, and, and get his involvement. He may lie and deny it or whatever, but the, the problem that he'll have, if he do start lying, because they never know, they'll tell you, you don't know what we know. And we catch you in a lie, then all of this that you done told us is wiped off the tables. It's, all of this is no good. You get caught in one lie. And so, Generally, when you have, if you ever looked at the show The Wire, <laughs> where at the end when Big Mackey 
when he got his deal, he laid out all type of shit. And they were like, oh, shit, we didn't know you did that. You know, you do stuff like that. You put everything on the table because you don't want it to come back on you. So that would be the only, only way that he would ever come clean on this Keefe D stuff or, or the Tupac stuff. Or they probably make a trip and go down, but right now he's denying everything because he's not at the point where he's ready to lay shit out because his attorneys are still telling him, we're going to beat this. We got this. This is nothing. It's only one victim. And, and you know, telling you all of that shit. But when they know it's good serious, when they know, okay, once the attorney feels you, you're out of money and this is the best deal I can get for you, then... It's going to be a point in time in about 2026, 20, 2027 20, where a lot of shit get laid on the table and a lot of things that y'all going to hear and going to find out about uh, will come to light. And a lot of people might be getting picked up and getting arrested. But so just stand by. Just wait. He's not at that point yet, but he will be at that point. And, but I do know or believe that at this point, he's not ready to fall on the store for Keefe D or, or, or tell that story yet until that, you know, verify what Keefe D is saying. Uh, but it eventually, conversation is going to happen, just not, not at the beginning, not this early in the game. Yes. Okay, Reggie. Um, so I wanted to get your opinion about this. So, when Diddy was trying to make bail, what uh, they offered up was $50 million, And then he, w- he said he was open to having a clause where he has no female visitors. Um, and the judge still rejected it. I wanted to get your thoughts on, do you feel like he offered up enough? And number two, why do you feel ultimately the judge denied his bail twice? Well... Because he said females, not males. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's accused of doing stuff to males, not just females. But no, it's all a, it's just all a big plan. They didn't want it. I know a lot of y'all say because because the alcohol company uh has got the you know it's in the judge's pocket and uh or the judges in their pocket and or however that shit go and uh. You know, they, they 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 squashed it. He ain't got his connections no more. Clyde Davis ain't looking out for him no more. And no, uh, it ain't because of that, y'all. It's just because of uh it's just because of uh the crimes that he's in there for or, or accused of doing, y'all. And uh y'all gotta remember he he you call I ain't never called nobody hundred and forty John, I only think I called you hundred and forty eight times. In a year, 148 times. Yeah, we might talk once a day, so it might be true. But he called this particular person 148 times in three days. That's straight harassment. He was contacting victims. They know he has money to try to make people go away. He's still on drugs. Y'all, y'all forget that is a major thing. It don't seem like nothing to you guys because a lot of everybody smoke weed and do this. But people normally that when you're facing crimes, you kind of go straight. You you be scared to do to, to you know to do crimes, other crimes. This dude is less than 24 hours away from turning himself in. No, 12 hours away from t- turning himself in, you know, the county jail. To ask the judge for uh, for bail, and he got drugs in his room. <laughs> he got drugs, and he, you know, he probably had injustice on. So that uh, the money, the the time of calling, uh, harassing alleged victims and and witnesses, and those are just the ones that reported it or that we know about. Uh, I'm sure there's other people he's been. Uh, He's, you know that, that 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 you know he has contacted that we haven't heard anything about. Uh, Shay Knight may be on the summer where he threw out about the Ben the Ben Affleck and J Lo 
situation and why it came to here so quickly. Uh, because she might have been contacted about some things. Uh, I.e., this picture right here. <laughs> yeah, you know, shit like this is surfacing. Shit like this is out. They, those six ladies and that U.S. attorney and their investigator teams, they got stuff like this. They making their rounds to people, jobs, and they're knocking on their door and coming to talk to them. People right now are shitting, can't eat, can't sleep, going crazy right now behind this investigation. This, this investigation is just to make Reggie Wright prediction right of September <laughs> come out. This is going to be an interesting, interesting month, y'all. I don't even know by the time this, this video aired, because I don't know when John going to post it. Because as we try to teach y'all, we don't post every day. We just tape on Sundays. But people are probably going to be resigning from jobs more. People probably done, might have been picked up and arrested. This whole month, y'all, the month of October is going to be a wow. I can't believe Mary J. Blige did this. I can't believe Stevie J. did this. I can't believe Roger Bonds did this. I, whoa. Jay-Z did what? That's why he was looking like that when Puffy was talking how they a billionaire a club and the billionaire guys and all of that. I just hope he'll, like hell ain't no Snoop Dogg or Dr. Dre in any of those videos <laughs> or pictures. But we'll see. We shall see. It's going to be a lot more people, y'all. Leor Corn. Steve Ruffer. I don't know. I'm not saying that these people have done anything. I don't know. Clyde Davis. It's going to be people. Meek Mills. Meek Mills trolling the hell. When somebody trolling... Meek Mill is trying to divert this shit away from him so quick. He he's the most he's talking about Puffy more than anybody right now. And people stepping down and resigning, right? I'm just saying, I'm throwing out names. I'm not saying any of these. I know anything about any of these people or not. I don't. But it's going to be some people that's going to be, y'all going to be, we're going to be surprised that's going to be witnesses, co-conspirators, unindicted. Or indicted conspirators. It's going to be interesting, y'all. And there's going to be a lot of people stepping by because I told y'all why earlier. Because of servant packages and for their, uh, their morality clauses and stuff, that they're going to be quitting these jobs. And uh, I think the original question was why, uh, you know. He was denied bail, right, John? Is that what you said? Yeah, why you feel the judge denied it. Yeah. And so there's a lot of people that that's going to come down and uh they and, and and the flight risk. You know, the flight risk. Well mainly more so of the threatening and the uh to make people not want to do this again in life. I mean, we don't hear all the Illuminati parties y'all talk about. All these swinger parties and all of this stuff. We got to get back to morality, y'all. Get some more more morality in this country. And I think we were really getting a little bit too open with sexuality and stuff. And I think they're just trying to will us back in. And uh, this is going to bring a, a lot of light to a lot of stuff. You know, what Harvey uh, uh, Weinstein was doing, what the Epsteins were doing, uh I think we got a little out of hand with with this with TD Jakes being at the type of parties. I think uh, the country is ready to get back and get our morals back right. To try to save you kids because um, 
Just think if we don't get this stuff and, and educate and show people that this is wrong. How crazy shit will be with the youngsters. Because we already see the girls on IG. They don't give a fuck. You got some money? You DM them? You got it. The videos with the young ladies ready to sell themselves for a fucking car. Just because the dude's driving a car. They be ready to do whatever. Doing 360s or whatever. Wow. But anyway, that would be my take. Uh, just that the judge is just like, no, nah, you don't did too much. There's too many allegations out there. You got this money. We got to show you. Epstein, and I know a lot of guys going to say, well, it was because he was black and this. Uh. They didn't let Epstein out, did they? There's some white people. Harvey didn't get out, did he? There's people. So let me teach y'all something, too, about a lot of people, even my stupid self, myself, been talking about uh, Russell and uh, going over to the Bali and stuff like that. Well, we got to research, and y'all learn when YouTubers are talking about it, learn the difference between uh, uh, treaties, countries with the treaty and extradition laws because I found out something that you can be extradited for Bali you just, it's just something about getting served civil lawsuits and stuff like that that can't happen and there's plenty of plenty of situations where the United States government will go in there if you're big enough and they want you big enough they will kidnap your ass from another country and put you on a plane so quick and drop you off and have you arrested. Let's learn about that. And so that's something new that I've been learning and researching lately that I didn't even know. I always knew that them motherfuckers would kidnap your ass though. <laughs> but yeah. Peace. Okay, one thing that um Diddy did have good luck on last week was um something i wanted to get your take on because it's very similar it has a lot of parallels with suge knight um but he got his hundred million dollar judgment dismissed because it wasn't filed properly uh, i just wanted to get your thoughts on that and um if the situation with suge knight would have been similar had he had a good lawyer team around him yeah we can look at it that way that's definitely everything you said is factual uh, about, you know, getting the judgment set aside. If y'all was on our live stream when me and Wack was talking and all of that, me and him was arguing about how that judgment was going to be set aside. And, of course, as Reggie predicted, the next day it was set aside. Uh, but some would say the reason that $100 million judgment was set aside was because who can get in front now? United States government <laughs> they can get in front of that $100 million judgment because trust me they put a lien on all this properties right now everything they got a lien on it because they trying to call this organization a criminal organization and there's a you know a, a, one of the things in the indictment where they trying to take his uh, his monies and his uh, properties and assets from him because they calling it a criminal a criminal enterprise which I think is a long stretch. But they do what they call a some type of lien. I can never think of the, the name of that lien that they put on you. But it's a lien that the government puts on your property. It, it just means that you can't sell anything without them giving permission to do it. And uh, I believe that's what they got on all this access. There's a, that type of lien on it where they would know or be notified if... Uh, if, you know, if he went to go and try to uh, liquidate one of those properties. And uh, now they're in front. They're in the front position where if that ju that judgment wasn't set aside, then that particular gentleman would be in uh, the front position. And so he would have to get that $100 million. Then they can get everything after that. That's just a conspiracy. That would be me being a conspiracy talker. I really believe, and just like I said before, 
we even knew that he was going to get indicted or whatever, that that $100 million uh, was going to be set aside. I knew that because I, on several cases where I know you have six months, if you can prove that you didn't know about the lawsuit and you had no knowledge of it, where you can have a default, not a judgment, a default judgment set aside. A regular judgment, you go to a jury trial and get a judgment, then you want to appeal, you got to pay one and a half time that amount to appeal it to stop the judgment proceedings. But a default judgment, you generally get six months to set aside because people will go and lie and say that they served you and they gave it this and then you'd be like, you didn't even know, you know. That's why a lot of corporations, they make you have an agent, what they call a person that you can go that's and serve, that'd be your agent or service is what they call it. That's the person who, when you know you got a lawsuit, you're supposed to serve the your agent on file, your pers- your agent on file. And so apparently that agent for Puffy or Puffy himself was never served and they were able to approve it. Now, people will say, well, he went down there and met with the guy and offered him $2.3 million. Well, that's generally, gener- that's generally uh, you know, negotiation before the lawsuit. Just like I try to tell y'all, before all this shit, all this nightmare came out on, on Diddy, Cassie knew. I mean, Cassie lawyers and people were talking to his people. He was just being stubborn, arrogant, a narcissist, or whatever y'all want to call it, uh, and was like, fuck it, do what you got to do. And then she did what she got to do, and I'm sure he wished he would have paid that $30 million, uh, you know, quietly. Uh before, you know, she had to file that lawsuit. And then he filed it. The, and then he pays and sells out with her the next day. <laughs> That's the attorney he should be mad at. If you want to be mad at anybody, the motherfucker that advised you, that didn't make your ass settle and going to advise you to settle the next motherfucking day. That's when you believe it was some smoke to that fire or some fire to that smoke. <laughs> and so... Uh, yeah, that would be my take on that, John. Okay, Reggie. Um, I saw this old um, interview clip from Dr. Dre uh, when they were promoting the 2001 album. Um, it looked like it was from like an MTV TRL or something like that where Dre speaks about a X-rated tape of his being stolen during a party. Um, I'll show it, and then I want to get your reaction to that, if that's okay. Yeah, Okay. Let's talk about this. Uh, this uh, we were just talking about this before the show started about a, a music videotape that was stolen. Do you want to talk about that now? Yeah. What, I mean, just break it down. What happened? I mean, it was a videotape that that we did in my house just for my private collection. You know what I mean? Snoop was a part of it. They got know? it. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody stole this tape from my house or something like that, and there's a lot of X-rated things on it. You know, so. <laughs> so what? Wait, well, let's see a second. <laughs> Snoop, you don't know about this? Remember the tape? You're on it. It's gone. Bueno? It's gone. <laughs> so what happened? You had a party? Someone, don't you, this is like the, the Tommy Pamela Lee thing. It's gone, now it's gonna be nah, out? it's worse than that, man. <laughs> oh, no. So are we looking for it? Can we say anything? Anybody yeah, watching? I mean, Whoever you... was at Dre's house at that party, you better return that tape. Please bring I it mean, back. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> What, what, what do you plan on doing? What is it gonna, is it gonna get out? What are we gonna say? I mean, if it gets out there, you know, so be it. I'm just, just letting everybody know, you know. It was out of my private collection, that's yeah. all. It wasn't meant to be out there like that. All right, well, let's hope it gets uh, returned in the mail. <laughs> you know, I, I knew about this tape. I knew, not this tape. I knew about this, this particular interview. I never caught that he said, and you were on the tape too, Snoop. I never caught that. Because I remember this subject coming up when when uh when you know I was going back and forth with Suge and and uh Suge had two females that used to come and visit him in prison. And the other one used to always drag, used to always fuck with him, like, yeah, that bitch, that bitch Miss Chalet got a sex tape out there. And that's why, because we was trying to get make her, you know, take Dr. Dre to court for extra child support. And she kept fighting us about that and all of that. 
And she kept saying, yeah, the reason why she don't want to come over with that, because she was doing, been doing threesomes, and they got tapes for her and her doing threesomes. And so Shug wouldn't say nothing. He would be over there just a jerk. Y'all know anything about Shug when he get nervous. Y'all know that he do this, he start twitching, right? And so he was doing that. And then when Mr. Lay come in the next day, he was like, yeah, what's this shit you got? You you got a sex tape out there. It got leaked. And she's like, Shug, Shug, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. I tell you, that that that, that interview caused a lot of stress in Mr. Lay's life. Uh, from Suge during that time, and he just reversed it. Suge didn't, he didn't give a fuck. But I never knew that, and she, the, the young lady that reported it to us never did tell us that and tell about that until he said, uh, you know, and you too, Snoop, <laughs> you was in the tape too. And so, I don't know, maybe they got some, I don't know, I guess guys do fuck one bitch with two guys, but... Did they have some drain? Did they have some puffy shit going on in 2001? <laughs> Did they have some of that? When one of them sitting in the corner jacking off to the other while they fucking shit? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I heard about that, that particular interview. Never watched it, just heard about it. And there was something that I'm telling y'all, Mr. Lacourt held about, but we always thought it was a, he was throwing out something to Mr. Lay like, Hey, this tape about to come out with us. Cause we knew her and Michelle and Dre were doing threesomes. Uh, we always thought it was with girls, so I'm gonna be honest, with girls. But for him to say Snoop was involved, <laughs> whew, yeah. But we always just thought it was Dre, Michelle, and another female. And so we did hear about it. And Michelle caught a lot of hell about that uh, from Shell in, in uh, 2001. While he was still in prison in the early part of 2001. So, yeah, <laughs> good find, John. During the live stream, you and WAC 100 were talking about something about Suge and, and Parquet Butter. Do you know what he's talking about? Because he's made reference to this a couple of times, and I don't know what it exactly is he's saying, but I didn't know if you wanted to speak on that. No, I have no idea what he's talking about on that. Um, but I can honestly say, uh, prior to Sugar going to prison, he would make homosexuality jokes like, because you yeah, I gotta remember, I said it too. Nigga, I'll fuck you in your ass or something like that. <gasps> that's just a way, cause that's the worst thing that can happen to us. You know, the worst thing that can happen to me is a man raping me. I know a lot of y'all like that, want that to happen to y'all. That's just the worst thing that can happen to Reggie Wright. And that's how I feel Suge Knight was talking, and that's how he feels. And so if he got some reference or he done heard something like that, that could be what the hell he's talking about. I don't know. I never heard that, but I can honestly sit up here and say, Suge Knight, and I even say Dr. Dre. I heard the rumors about Dre, but all I ever seen no niggas with were fine yellow bitches, <laughs> both of them. And I know men hide with women, and, and you know, as we see with Diddy and all of that, uh, but, uh, yeah, I would never believe or, or, or experience or seen any of those guys uh, swinging towards a man. And so if that's what he's trying to insinuate, uh, I don't know where he gets that shit from. And so uh, that would be my take on that. But I do believe, and I have said before, that a lot of those guys uh, that we look up to and, and, and uh, you know, the quote-unquote gay members and all of that, they have some secrets behind those jails. No walls. They have did some things. And I also believe, because I heard somebody say, well, they're just a giver and not a taker. Well, that's a term called. Y'all look it up. If you flip, you flop. Because the nigga getting fucked in the ass, I bet you his dick get hard. And then he going to want to relieve his dick. So that would be my take on that. So don't let somebody come telling you, I'm a giver, I'm a giver. Nigga, if you give, you going to receive. Because that nigga ain't going to let you fuck them no more. 
if you get in a relationship like that. The niggas in jail, one out of ten niggas in there. Those niggas are walking around with condoms now. Do y'all know in the state of California, they're giving these men condoms? And they're getting walking around with condoms in their pockets now. Why you need a fucking condom in your pocket in prison? It's crazy. So those are the secrets that they don't talk about by prison. For all you young wannabe thugs and all of that. Those are the untold stories. Go get the, go really sit down with a real OG. And get the one stories for all you guys that want to be gangsters and want to be tough and want to flatterize this gangster life. 